Hi, my name is Luiren, and here's a quick stencil tip. Get values between behaviors. The tips presented so far have encouraged you to use behaviors and custom events. And now I'll show you how you can retrieve attributes from other behaviors, and how you can set attributes between behaviors. Let's start by making some distinctions between the types of values we can work with. Attributes are unique to each behavior. If you have an attribute called jumping in two different behaviors, those are two entirely different attributes. You have to create an attribute, select its type, and if working on a behavior, define if it is hidden or not before you can do anything with it. But there is another type of value that you can use. Actor values are unique to each actor. Whenever you get the actor value jumping for your actor, it's always the same, regardless of where you get it. You don't have to create them beforehand, and can set and retrieve their values directly anywhere. You can think of them as an attribute unique to the actor that you can reference anywhere. As such, they bypass the need to do any of the things described in this video. But do note, they are different from attributes. You cannot use these blocks to get attributes, only actor values. Attributes and actor values have their own use cases. I prefer to use attributes the most. I can easily keep track of the behavior that sets their values, and I can repeat the name between behaviors if needed. Plus, there's also the non-hidden option for customization. Actor values, on the other hand, are perfect if you need to create values during the game itself. What we'll cover today is how to retrieve and set attributes between different behaviors. One value I constantly retrieve between my behaviors is the current health of the actor. It is defined in my health behavior. For a lot of the actions in my game, I only want the actor to be able to execute them if their health is greater than zero. Let's see how that's done. I mentioned in a previous quick tip that I like to use a custom event called get at the top of my behaviors to retrieve any needed attributes from other behaviors. First, I check if the actor has the behavior. If you try to retrieve an attribute from a behavior the actor doesn't have, your logs will be filled with error messages. Optionally, you can also check if the behavior is enabled. I like to create an attribute with the same name as the one I want to retrieve to keep consistency. And I use the get attribute block to retrieve the value. You type in the internal name of the attribute, which you can find here. And the behavior name. For the internal name, it's by default the attribute's name preceded by an underscore and without spaces. For text, numbers, and booleans, you can use the respective blocks to convert the values. I honestly don't know if that's really needed, but I've been doing it like this for years, so call it a legacy habit. For any other types, such as maps or actors, you can use the block as is. For scene behaviors, just use the get value for scene block. The set attribute for behavior block is used to set attributes for other behaviors, as the name implies. You also use the internal name and the behavior name. Make sure you're setting it to the correct type. If you're setting a number attribute, make sure the value you're giving it is a number, for example. I use this block in the difficulty mode behavior from my RPG elements pack. If I change the game's difficulty, the behavior can set the value of attributes from whatever behaviors I want to make the game harder or easier. 
For both getting and setting attributes, instead of typing the internal name and behavior name, you can click the arrow here and select the attribute from your behavior via this menu. One very important thing to keep in mind, you cannot get or set attributes for other behaviors in a created event. That's because there is no control over the order in which behaviors are initialized. If a behavior is not initialized, you can't get or set attributes for it. It's perfectly fine to just do those operations in the update event. But, in case you want to do some sort of logic as soon as the actor or scene is created, involving multiple behaviors, just do this. The initialized boolean will never become false again, making this piece of code to only execute once. That's it for this quick tip. I'll leave links in the description if you want to learn more about Stencil, check the resources I've made, and to my Twitter if you want updates on what I'm currently working on. Leave a comment if there are any Stencil topics you want me to cover. Suggestions are always welcome. Thank you for watching.